The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. And welcome in, everybody, to a new th- series we have going on the High Low Sports Podcast. That is DJ, of course, joining you today. We're going to be doing Mock Draft Monday. We have a few more weeks to the NFL Draft. Right now, it's nothing but rumors, he said, she said, and a whole lot of speculation. And we're going to play right into that with our Mock Draft each week leading right up until the draft. Today, we're going to follow a little bit of some rumors, some gut feelings, some practical ideas, and just have a little bit of fun with it as well, since we still got about 20 days, give or take, left. So, we're going to go and jump right into it here. Mock Draft 1.0 for Mock Draft Monday is taking place. So we're going to go ahead and hit start right away. And on the at the top, we have Bryce Young going to the Carolina Panthers. There's a lot of talk about them maybe looking at Stroud, maybe Richardson, or looking to trade back. I'm going to say they traded everything and the kitchen sink to get up, get up to this point. I think they're going to stick and they're going to pick and they're going to take the best quarterback on the board. We're going to say they take Bryce Young. Pick number two with Houston. This is where we're going to have a little bit of fun. There is rumors that they might not take a quarterback at this spot. It sounds like maybe they like Bryce Young, but maybe not the other ones quite as much. D'Amico Ryan's coming from San Francisco. He's part of teams that went to the NFC Championship game with multiple different quarterbacks, having, I think it was four last year, including Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy himself. At this point, you have pick number 12, some decent quarterbacks here. You got multiple picks next year. You might even just ride out Davis Mills one more year because it feels like you got a little bit of stability finally. Ryan's has a six-year contract. He knows the value of having an incredible pass rush and a formidable defensive line. So I'm going to say he takes Will Anderson Jr. at this point, taking the best defensive player on the board. Two Alabama players going one and two. And thusly, the floodgates will open here at pick number three for the Arizona Cardinals. C.J. Stroud could, could go number one overall. Sitting there at three, this is where I think we're going to start seeing some trade options come in. And leading the way for that, we're going to go ahead and say, let's get this trade brought up here really quick. Arizona is going to trade pick number three. And I think it's going to be the Indianapolis Colts who are going to jump up just one spot, just just enough to make sure they get their guy. And I think Arizona is willing to take just go back one spot because they'll get whoever they were going to get here anyway because they're not in the market for a quarterback right now. So we'll go ahead and get that trade through. And now we see the Colts are now on the clock. And I think Getting plowed for Stroud pays off as I think they get their guy not pick number three. They get their quarterback of the future. And I think the guy that they want very much as well, too. So it's going to take us to pick number four, Arizona. Still sitting there. I think they could once again try and trade back if they want. But at this point, look, they have so many needs across the board. I'm going to say they go with the edge Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. They need a pass rush. Gannon coming from Philadelphia, he knows the value of a good pass rush and a rotation at defensive line. So we'll take Tyree Wilson here, the edge from Texas Tech, the freak of nature who I think will give them something to build around as well. Now Seattle at pick number five. This is fun because they were a playoff team that is now picking number five, and they could go in so many different directions. There's a lot of options on the board, but I think seeing him there, I think they're going to take Jalen Carter right here. I think he's too good of a talent just sitting there five fits a need perfectly there are those question marks obviously as well too but i think they're going to stick and pick and they're going to take their guy there as well detroit at number six i think they're gonna i think they're gonna go towards the defensive end and i think they're gonna also probably look at edge a lot but i think at that when they see the corners available it's gonna be hard to turn those down so i'm gonna say they take christian gonzalez the corner out of oregon Long, lengthy, put him out on an island, everything you want from a corner, perfect prototype. So Christian Gonzalez going to Detroit. Pick number seven for the Raiders. I Honestly, I think they're going to take Anthony Richardson at this point. If he somehow drops them at seven, which is how this draft seems to be playing out, is I don't think those teams are going to be looking to trade back, seeing as how they have multiple picks coming up. I'm going to say that the, the Raiders are going to take Anthony Richardson, sit behind Jimmy Garoppolo, Josh McDaniels. We know how much he loved Tim Tebow, taking him in the first round. Anthony Richardson has a significantly higher ceiling and is a much better passer on paper. So give me Anthony Richardson here going to the Raiders to sit for a year and probably honestly one of the best spots for him because as soon as he gets to go out there, you're going to have Devontae Adams and possibly Hunter Renfro, possibly Josh Jacobs. So give me Anthony Richardson going here at pick seven. Pick number eight, Atlanta ruled themselves out of the Lamar Jackson sweepstakes. They said they're going to roll with Desmond Ritter, so they're not going to take a quarterback here. What I think they will do, though, is I think they're going to look at they're going to look at the edge class here, a very, very deep class. And I'm going to go with Lucas Van Ness here. I think an underrated guy that a lot of teams are going to like even more than some of some of us people watching. 
pure powerhouses. Well, at one of these edges is going to slip. It could very easily be Lucas Van Ness, but I'm going to say Atlanta looks and they continue to try and build on that defensive front and see if they can get a little bit better of a pass rush. So give me Lucas Van Ness here going to Atlanta. Number nine, Chicago. I think this they wouldn't be opposed to trading out here, but we're going to have them go and stand pat, and we're going to give them Paris Johnson Jr., the best pass-blocking offensive lineman arguably in the draft, prototypical left tackle, everything you would want, freak athlete. I think Skoronsky might be a little bit better overall lineman, but I think Johnson just being that pure left tackle type build, I think they're going to take him here. And now we have the Philadelphia Eagles here sitting at pick number 10, and you know what? For the Eagles at pick number 10, I want to I want to see them have a little bit of fun. I'm going to say they reach a little bit and they go, quote unquote, reach. I'm going to say they take Bijan Robinson. You don't have a whole lot of needs. Your offensive line's a little bit older. Your D-line could use a little reassuring. But you kept Darius Slay. You kept Bradbury. You have all of your receivers. You did lose Miles Sanders. You did bring in some running back help. But I'm going to say they go with Bijan Robinson. Just take an absolute explosive playmaker on the offensive side of the ball to pair, pair, pair with Jalen Hurts. And maybe take a few of the hits off of him as well, too. Maybe you don't have to run him quite as much. Now. Pick number 11, Tennessee. I think there's a strong chance they would have traded up by now if it started to go this way. But I'm going to say they instead of ta- they're going to go ahead and take Will Levis here. I think they're looking towards the future. There's rumors that not a big, they're not really high on Malik Willis. Ryan Tannehill is expensive. They're going to have to keep him this year. This gives Will Levis some time to sit as well. Tennessee's. In a not rebuild, rebuild, it feels like it was some of the players they got rid of. They did keep, keep Jeffrey Simmons, so we'll have to wait and see. But oh, we're going to have a little fun, and we're going to say Will Levis goes at pick number 11. I don't think he'll slide too much further than this. I think somebody might even trade up ahead of Tennessee to grab him. Now at pick number 12 with Houston, kind of shaking things up a little bit early on, taking the, taking the, the defensive end, Will Anderson, excuse me, instead of going with the quarterback. Here I do think they will go offense, though. I think they're going to look down the board and, you know what? I think they're going to – let's go ahead and jump into the receivers. I'm going to say they look at, look at the receiver class, and I'm going to go ahead and give them Quentin Johnson, who I think there were some better options, but Quentin Johnson's combination of size, speed, strength, and just freakish athletic ability, I think they're going to go ahead and take him here to pair with the likes of John Mechie, Dalton Schultz, and some of the weapons they got. Just give Davis Mills every opportunity they can to succeed, or if they take a quarterback maybe in the second round like a Tanner McKee or a Hendon Hooker, someone like that, just – Load up on the weapons that you can in Johnson's catch radius and what he brings to the table. I think will be hard for them to turn down. Pick number 13, if this is still the Jets pick and it doesn't end up going to the Packers, if the board falls like this, they will sprint. And I mean sprint to the podium to grab Peter Skoronsky, the offensive lineman from Northwestern. His floor is a really good starting guard, it feels like, like at a high-level starting guard. And I think he could. His he has some shorter arms, not an overly great athlete, but just a great player and a great offensive lineman. So, Peter Skoronsky, 13 to the Jets. Pick 14 to the Patriots. They have they they need offensive help, honestly. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that they should go go and take a receiver here, but I don't think they will because that's not the Bill Belichick necessary the way he does things. He kind of marches to the beat of his own drum. When I see a versatile player like Devin Witherspoon still sitting there, you could play in the nickel, you could put him on an island. He's nasty, he's not afraid to tackle, he's very physical. Give me Devin Witherspoon here to the Patriots at 14. Now at pick 15, it would be fun right here to give the Green Bay a receiver, just another first-round receiver, the thing Aaron's been asking for for however many years now, and they finally do it right when he leaves. But I'm going to go ahead and go with offensive line. Looking at the tackles, there are some good ones to the left. I'm going to say they go with Broderick Jones, the big offensive lineman out of Georgia. Just try and make things as easy as they can for Jordan Love. They want to they want to keep him upright, they want to keep him healthy, and they want to get that run game going with A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, and squad. So give me Broderick Jones here to the Packers. And then it picks 16. We got the Washington Commanders. I'm going to say they look at the board and they don't need defensive line help, obviously, because they have that in spades. I think they like the idea of bringing in Brian Branch, a safety slash nickel corner, very versatile piece, someone they could move all around on that defense. They have weapons. They could use some offensive line help. Quarterback, they're giving Sam Hell the shot. So I'm going to say they do their best to make their defense as formidable as possible, giving Sam Hell as Howell as many opportunities as possible. So. We'll go with Brian Branch here. Maybe a little bit higher than most people. I think it's just a really good fit for him. And speaking of good fits, pick number 17. If there's one thing the Steelers seem to like, it is lineage and ties to Pittsburgh. So we're going to go with Joey Porter Jr. here. Corners in need. Joey Porter Jr. is very physical. Takes on challenges. It takes on the number one receivers game in and game out. A little bit handsy, a little bit physical, but I like Joey Porter Jr. going to the Steelers here. 
Now we got Detroit back on the clock as well. And we saw earlier in the draft, we go back and take a look at their pick here. They took Christian Gonzalez, the elite corner from Oregon. I do think they're going to double down on the defensive side of the ball here. I like Kalijah Cansey, the deep interior defensive lineman out of Pittsburgh. You got Aiden Hutchinson on the outside. You're now shoring up your back end with Gonzalez. I like that to bring in Kalijah Cansey to give you an interior push to go with Hutchinson as well, too. And they've been comparing him to Aaron Donald a lot. I don't quite know about that, but I think as an interior rotational pass rusher, I like what Cansey can bring right out of the gate for a very, very competitive and team in Detroit that's looking to make a run this year, especially in that division. Tampa Bay now we have as well. And I think this is a very, very prime spot to trade. I not sure who I'd want them to trade with necessarily. I knew, I think this is one where they do have needs, but they have so many they can move around as needed, but we're going to go ahead and stay on the, we're going to go and stay put. They need some offensive line help. Donovan Smith just left. I like the idea of bringing in Anton Harrison. Darnell Wright might be a little bit better of a fit, but I like Anton Harrison as well here. And I think a lot of teams are going to like him too. So we'll go. Anton Harrison, the big offensive lineman from Oklahoma. Now we're back with Seattle, who got Jalen Carter early in the draft. And I think right now they look at the way the board fell, and they could use a little bit of defensive help as well. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in Miles Murphy here, the edge from Clemson. I do like Nolan Smith a little bit more than some of these other guys, but I think Miles Murphy will kind of fit what Seattle likes to do as well. Pick number 21 with the Los Angeles Chargers. This is where I think the run on receiver is going to kickstart as well. They got a lot of really good options here. I'm going to give them Zay Flowers, who I think is receiver number one in the draft. He's explosive. His route running is incredible. He's got great hands. There's not a whole lot he can't do. And I think putting him in the slot with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the outside, he's going to burn people right up the field. Put Keenan Allen in the slot. Zay Flowers can go on the outside. So give me Zay Flowers here, giving Justin Herbert a down the field weapon. Speaking of weapons, Baltimore recently brought in Odell. You do have Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews. By all intents and purposes, we're going to say they're keeping Lamar Jackson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a I'm going to give them another receiver. They're going to double down, triple down, whatever you want, however you want to describe it to keep him. And with Jackson Smith and Jigba sitting right there, I don't think they overthink this one. Take him. He's can lead their team and catches right away. Let Odell and Rashad Bateman be the big play guys. Let Jackson Smith and Jigba move the chain. So you've got another weapon going to Baltimore for Lamar. Now in Minnesota, they need to fortify that defense by all means necessary. They want a lot of really close one-score games, and frankly, that defense was just not very good the entire season. It was one of the worst. So I think we're going to go on to the defensive side of the ball. And you know what? I kind of like them looking at the secondary as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the corners. I, there's quite a few good corners here that I like. I'm going to go with Cam Smith. I think Emmanuel Forbes and Deontay Banks make a very strong case, but we're going to go with Cam Smith in this one. Honestly, they need all the help they can get, so they can't really go wrong with any of them. Cam Smith seems to be a guy that's high on a lot of boards as well, too. So we'll go with Cam Smith. And now for the Jaguars here at pick 24, the way things kind of fell, you got Calvin Ridley coming into that squad next year. They got a lot of offensive weapons to go with Trevor Lawrence. So we're going to say they stick to the defensive side of the ball. We're going to add some depth to their cornerback cornerback field room. We're going to bring in Deontay Banks, the corner from Maryland there as well just to fortify their defense a little bit more because they know in that in the AFC, you're going to have to get a stop here and there. They have their quarterback. They got weapons. They got the coach. Let's go and bring in somebody to hopefully get you a couple takeaways and some stops for the giants here. They, I I like the way this fell for them. So I'm going to go and give them Jordan Addison. You brought in Darren Waller. You brought in Paris Campbell. You, you still need a lot of weapons. Jordan Addison could be that number one guy gets open, does everything pretty well, not freakishly explosive, but there's a reason He's, he was a Bolitnikoff Award finalist for two years in a row, if I'm not mistaken. And if I if I believe correctly, he did win it last year as well. Either way, one of the best receivers in the draft falling down to them as well. So we'll go take Jordan Addison to the Giants. Pick number 26 for the Cowboys. I think they'll be smitten if Dalton Kincaid is still hanging out right here. There's a little bit of concern with his injuries, especially his back, but the upside he offers as a tight end to replace Dalton Schultz, it's really hard to it's hard to see them passing him up at this point. You have Tony Pollard. You, your offensive line starting to kind of regain some traction with after bringing Tyler Smith last year. You have Dak, you have Amari Cooper, no, it's not Amari Cooper, sorry, you have C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. You got all the weapons. Brandon Cook's now coming in, bringing Don Kincaid, help move the chain. So Don Kincaid to Dallas. For Buffalo, you know, they do need some offensive line help, and I think Darnell Wright sitting there is really going to be hard to turn down. It would be fun for them to take an explosive playmaker here or something like that, but I'm going to say Darnell Wright, they're going to fortify the trenches just a little bit. 
Now at pick number 28, I really don't think he will slide like this, just the way the board played out. It kind of ended up with it going that way. I'm going to say they take Nolan Smith. I think he is one of the better edge defenders in the class. I think he very easily could have gone number eight to Atlanta if they decided to go that way. And it could have been Lucas Van Ness or one of those edge guys slipping. Some guys are going to slip just because I think after those first top 10 or so players, they're, everyone I think can slide here. They're especially in at edge where it's very deep and a corner. So we'll say Nolan Smith will go here at pick number 28. Pick number 29 for New Orleans, bringing in Derek Carr. I think they're going to look to just kind of give him as many weapons, as many options as possible. So we're going to go and take a look at receivers. And Jalen Hyatt makes a lot of sense here. And you know what? I'm not going to overthink it. We're going to go with Jalen Hyatt here. Gives him a deep down the field threat to complement Olave. And if Mike Thomas can stay somewhat healthy-ish, I like Jalen Hyatt as a downfield threat. They could use some offensive line help. There's some really good interior offensive line, and I think they sh- they could probably look towards. But we're going to go ahead and stick with Jalen Hyatt for for this one as well. Now at pick number 30 with the Philadelphia Eagles making a bit of a splash earlier on in this one. I think this one's going to be a more Philadelphia style pick. I think they're going to stick with, they're going to stick on the defensive side. And I think that I like them bringing in Brian Brissy. I think Osiris Torrance would be a great fit as well, but we're going to go with Brian Brissy load, continue to load up on that defensive line. Lost a couple of people in the off season. We're going to go ahead and get, fill up in those spots as well. And now pick 31 for the chiefs. You re- you're the Super Bowl champion. There's not a whole lot of needs on this team. So we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun here as well. We're going to go ahead and go to tight end to compliment Travis Kelsey as he's getting older. We saw a lot of two tight end sets with Kansas City this last year. I think they can they can kind of take a shot here. I'm going to say they take Darnell Washington, the big tight end out of Georgia. The best run blocking tight end in the class to go with Travis Kelsey. Big body. Put him in the red zone. You have Travis Kelsey on one side, Darnell Washington on the other side. Patrick Mahomes will be flinging touchdowns left and right, even more so than he already is. So this is kind of an Andy Reid having fun type of position at pick here is what I think as well. Coming off a Super Bowl win, a very young defense. I think this is where they can, there's a lot of better options, but I think this is one where they might have a little bit of fun. And as we can see, a lot of high quality players, Osiris Torrance, Mazzie Smith, Will McDonald, Jameer Gibbs, Keely Ringu, Emmanuel Forbes, Jack Campbell. There's a lot of great players. Michael Mayer slipping to the second round in this. Draft is always wild. There's always some people that go a lot earlier than we would anticipate, but I do think this is going to be a very, very fun draft to keep pay attention to. And this is what we have for mock our first episode of Mock Draft Monday. Definitely be sure to stick around. We have a few more coming up here leading up to the draft, as well as me and my co-host probably doing a one-round mock draft where we alternate picks as well. So definitely want to stick around for those. But for now, this will do it for the first ep- rendition of Mock Draft Monday. We appreciate you all joining us, and we will see you again next week. Thank you.